is a song that can be sung in various ways. The way that I copied it out, we're actually singing two verses together, and then the, uh, we'll sing the chorus, two verses together, then the chorus, two verses together, then the chorus, and then the last verse. And this is a children's song, a funny song, but it is going to come up again uh, in the course of the service. So let's uh, rise and be jolly.
The Old Testament has some moments of humor, some moments of whiz whimsy, um, some, some stories that um, I'm sure were beloved just because they kind of make fun of people who thought they were really hot stuff. And in this case, the story in 2 Kings 5 is exactly that. There is this mighty commander who thinks that he is so powerful that everything just should happen the way he wants it to happen. But it gets leprosy, which is not on his bucket list. And so he is stuck. He has this powerful position. He, um, he commands armies. He is uh, wealthy and well-respected. And then he has this ignominious disease which turns people into beggars on the outside of society. So, he is very, very blessed in that he has a servant girl, a slave probably, in his household who knows that Elisha is a miracle worker. Now, Naaman, the general, is not an Israelite. He is not part of um, of God's people, Israel, and yet his servant girl knows the story. She is, in fact, from Israel, and she convinces him that he ought to give um, Elisha a chance. But even then, he's not satisfied because Elisha is not as, as um, dutiful and, and awed by his power as he ought to be. So, hear this story. Um, from 2 Kings. Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man and in high favor with his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Aram. The man, though a mighty warrior, suffered from leprosy. Now, the Aramean, on uh, the Arameans on one of their raids had taken a young girl captive from the land of Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter that he received from Naaman, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to give death or life that this man sends word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Just look and see how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. But when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent a message to the king. Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me that he may learn that there is a prophet in Israel. So... Naaman came with his horses and chariots and halted at the entrance of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became angry and went away, saying, I thought that for me he would surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and would wave his hand over the spot and cure the leprosy. Are not Albana and far, far the rivers in Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? He turned and went away in a rage. But his servants approached him and said to him, Father, if the prophet had commanded you, to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more when all he said to you was wash and be clean? So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan according to the word of the man of God. His flesh was restored, like the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. Then he returned to the man of God. He and all his company, he came and stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. The story actually continues where uh, Naaman decided to dig up a bunch of uh, Israel's dirt and take it back with him.
because he thought that somehow that way he could take God along with him as well. Um, so it is, it is an interesting story. It actually does come up um, in um, Jesus' life when he refers to Naaman and people get mad at him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Song response to him. Hallelujah. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright of the congregation. Great are your works, O Lord. Honor by all who delight in him. Majesty and splendor mark your deeds, and your righteousness endures forever. You cause your own mercy to be remembered. You are gracious and full of compassion. You give food to those who fear you, remembering forever your covenant. You have shown your people the power of your works, and giving them the lands of the nations. The works of your hands are faithfulness, and justice are all your precepts are true. They stand fast forever and ever, because they are done in truth and equity. You send redemption to your people and command your covenant forever. Holy and awesome is your name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who practice this have a great understanding. God's praise endures forever.
Praise to you, O Christ. Good. I'd like to have the children come. Count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
Can all of you guys come to ten? Yeah. What? Yeah. Did you sing this song in Sunday school? Yeah. Yeah? All right. Well, we're going to sing it now, and then we're going to sing it after the sermon. So we're just going to practice it right now. So you get to count to ten, right? And we do that three times, even though the bulletin says four. And then it is only one came back. Are you saying that one today? Yeah. Awesome. Then you're going to be well practiced. Okay, so just the kids are going to sing now. Later on, it's up to all of you. I already did it. Good. Good, then you'll know how to do it, right? Ready? Peace to you. 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 Peace to
Peace with you. Peace with you. Peace with you. Or anything wild and crazy, they had in their minds 
and they perhaps did show themselves to their priests. We hope that they did. Um, but the fact that only one, and he was a Samaritan, came back to say thank you to Jesus, who had done the healing, just shows how natural it is for us to take things, blessings and goodness and all that happens kind of for granted. Like maybe we have a moment of, of gratitude, like, oh man, I'm glad I don't feel sick anymore. Or, oh, glad, I'm glad that I can work my knee again after that injury. Or, oh, I'm glad I stopped hailing and my house is still standing here. But we don't actually say thank you. We don't take that moment of just standing still and saying, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for this incredible gift you have given me. I have trained myself that when I have near accidents, <laughs> which happens a lot when there's so much wildlife on the road, uh, to maybe not stop driving, but to say out loud, thank you, Lord, thank you so much. And I was chatting with Pat Pung yesterday at um, a Bear Brady, and I told her that ever since her accident, I've been really, really cognizant that the natural instinct is to swerve. And, the, and you know, shortly after that, I swerved to avoid hitting a skunk, and I remember thinking, Thank you, Lord, but help me to remember not to swerve. Um, and so those those moments of actually saying out loud or, or consciously, consciously pausing to give thanks to God is one of those ways that we kind of grow our faith and help plant those seeds inside of us that when things are rough and we need that strength to keep going, we have trained to trust that God is on our side and God wants what is good for us and God is there rooting for us to get through, to give us the strength we need to get to the next day and the day after that. So, the nine who didn't come back, they were already healed. Jesus didn't like punish them by taking away the healing. But you know what they missed out on? The satisfaction of having completed the circle. Because they asked Jesus for healing and they received it, but they didn't thank the one who gave it to them. And for all of us, yes, we can just go on with our lives when the good things happen, and God's not going to yank them away from us, but there is a beauty and a joy and a, and a true fellowship with God when we acknowledge that every good gift comes from Him, that His love for us endures forever, that we are a part of a relationship. And just as we should be thanking the people in our lives who bring us joy, who take care of us, who love us, who support us, who give us um, those smiles that keep us going, that builds a relationship with human beings. What God wants from us is that we acknowledge that all good gifts around us are sent from heaven and we thank the Lord. So, when we sing this silly song, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, let's remember that we want to be like the Samaritan who came back and gave thanks to the Lord. Let's rise and sing.
litany is uh, printed in the bulletin. We believe in God who made us in his image. We live, we love, we laugh because we are all here. We believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, our Lord and Savior. He had the last thought from the devil when he rose from the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, co-equal and co-eternal with the Father and the Son. Our Counselor, our Guide, our Motivator, He is our joy. Forgive us, Lord, when we take ourselves too seriously, when we don't claim the happiness that is rightfully ours as your children, when we forget that you have had the last laugh in this world. Restore to us the joy of our salvation, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Holy and gracious Lord, we thank you for blessing us with joy, for reminding us to lift up our hearts to you and to receive the warmth of your countenance. We thank you for calling this church into being and for sustaining and growing it throughout the decades. For those who have gone before us and those who come after us, we pray, Lord, that the joy that you alone can bring will fill our hearts and the thankfulness for those who have planted the faith from one generation to another will never leave us. We pray for your holy church in this and every place, for those who are Christians in places of great difficulty, danger, persecution, famine, war, disaster. Give them strength and courage and the help they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our companion synods in Nicaragua and Cameroon that joy may also be theirs and their celebrations may be filled with hope and love. We pray for our neighbors in solidarity as through times of strife and difficulty and sometimes great challenge. They continue to do great work throughout our synod. We pray for Lutherans Outdoors, St. Dismas, Lutheran Campus Ministries, Pine Ridge Reconciliation Center, First Lutheran African Ministry in Sioux Falls, Church on the Street, McLaughlin Community Alliance Group, Spirit of Hope, Pueblo de Dios, Wayatan Lutheran Church. And for all of the ministries serving hungry people in this state and all in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for Chris and Christy Mead as uh, he endures this cancer battle that is extremely difficult. And for Rebecca and Aaron Lebowski as she struggles to retain consciousness after six brain surgeries in the last two weeks. We pray for her family as well. We pray for Eileen, Vernon, James, Pat, Dave, Norbert, Jusan, Doris, Shannon, Jan, Kay, and Jessica, for your healing power, your hope and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we lift up to you our families from the youngest to the oldest. We pray for loving support and forgiveness and joy in one another. We pray for those who are farm families going through long hours that you would keep them safe and mutually supportive. We pray for the joy that is a part of seeing their work come to fruition be strong and enough to carry on. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for seasonable weather and we pray for relief for those who have gone through disastrous weather and other circumstances. We pray for those who are wondering how to cope. And we thank you that our members have come through the storm well. And we pray for all who are still wondering how they will make tomorrow happen. Thank you, Lord, for this congregation. Thank you for all the faithful servants who do your work here and as
as they go out into the world. Into your hands we commend offer and we pray, trusting in your mercy, in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. So every week I am printing the confirmation memory work, and I challenge the uh, confirmands to really work on Psalm 46 uh, this week and next week, but you actually have a little bit more time than that. It would be a wonderful project during the month of October um, to memorize Psalm 46, because it is the Psalm for Reformation Sunday every year. It is... Um, Vaguely, the inspiration for a mighty fortress is our God. And it's just a really good psalm to have under your belt and to call upon um, when you really need to know that God is our refuge and strength. And no matter what is happening around us, will be with us. Um, another couple of announcements that I didn't make this earlier this morning. We had the fire extinguisher guy come around this week. And... I was mortified that I honestly did not know where the fire extinguishers were, even the ones I see every day, because you pass by them, and unless you are trained to take note, you don't see them. For example, there is one right here in the sacristy, right by the window, and I didn't know it, and I have seen that for nine and a half years. And I would venture to say, because the gentleman who came here said it's the same for everybody, we need to train ourselves to notice where they are, to know that, so that if the time ever comes when you need a fire extinguisher, you know where to look. So I wrote in here where they are. You can wander around and find them either today or some other time. Because even though we would say when we're gathered for worship, we have some experts in the back who know what to do, we take turns cleaning this church, being here working in the office or being here doing some other thing when we might be the only one here. I come um, from a family who had a church burned down and I know well the anguish that that caused. We can be at least a little bit on team keeping this building safe. But as I wrote in the announcement and I want to repeat what the gentleman said to me, if there is any doubt about your safety, get out of our building. Don't take time to find a fire extinguisher. Also, in the narthex back here, we have an AED machine. Some of us have gone through training, but you don't need to have training to use it because it explains to you what to do. It could save a life. So that's my little sermon, sermonette after the sermon. Um, think about those things. And if you see a bunch of cars here on Tuesday, know that we are having a women's retreat for the Prairie Rivers Conference. And if you can, you are welcome to be a part of that too. Probably not the men. You go do your combine. That is a women's retreat. All right, and I still need drive into action team volunteers. So if you've got one, let me know. More bad jokes with me. How did Eve know for sure Adam wasn't seeing anyone else? Because she was the only one on earth. No, because every morning she counted Adam's ribs. Oh, I get it. Why did you all have to punish all the chickens on the yard? I don't know why. Because they were using foul language. We can't be having that. Card playing was also not allowed on the ark. Oh, oh really? Uh, because Noah was always standing on the deck. Enough of the jokes. Can we sing another song? Yes, but first, just a couple more ridiculous riddles. All right, let's get it over. Who was the best babysitter in the Bible? No, no idea. idea. David, because he rocked Goliath to sleep. How do we know Joseph was a tennis player? I don't know. Wow. He was 30 years old when he served on Pharaoh's court. Ah, I see what you did there. All right. You guys aren't very good at laughing at the 
he's perfect. <laughs> So um, the offering plates are going to pass while we're singing, and you're going to stand up because you can't sit that song, sing this song sitting down. Um, joyful, joyful, we adore you. Eight thirty-six. Thank you. 